the C7 rifle and C8 carbine. Direct gas operation, air cooled, rotating bolt locking action, magazine fed, semi automatic and fully automatic firing. The cycle of operation has seven distinct actions. Firing, unlocking, extraction, ejection, cocking, loading, locking. From firing to locking, the cycle of operations takes seven one hundredths of a second. The action of the bolt carrier on the bolt cam pin unlocks the bolt. Continuing rearward motion of the cocking handle cocks the hammer. and withdraws the bolt from the breech, allowing the cartridge to rise into the feedway. Release of the cocking handle propels the bolt forward to contact the cartridge in the feedway. The cartridge is chambered. The bolt carrier continues its forward motion, forcing rotation of the bolt cam pin. The action of the bolt cam pin locks the bolt lugs behind the barrel extension lugs. The weapon is ready to fire. The impact of the firing pin against the primer ignites the propellant. Combustion of the propellant produces heat and gas. Expansion of the gas forces the bullet to detach from the cartridge. The bullet is engraved by the rifling of the barrel. The gases flow through the gas port and a gas tube to the bolt carrier. And drive it to the rear. Rearward motion of the bolt carrier unlocks the bolt from the barrel extension. The bolt extracts the cartridge case from the chamber. The cartridge case 
is ejected from the breach. The disconnector engages the upper hammer bent to prevent refiring. Decompression of the return spring in the rifle butt forces the lower bolt lug against the cartridge. The cartridge is chambered. Continued forward motion of the bolt carrier locks the bolt into the barrel extension. The trigger must be fully released before the rifle can fire again. The hammer is held to the rear by the sear engaged in the lower hammer bent. When the trigger is squeezed, the sear disengages and the hammer rotates forward, striking the firing pin. Combustion of the propellant produces heat and gas. When the gas builds up to its maximum pressure, the bullet is forced from the cartridge. gas pressure in the bore must drop to a safe level before the bolt unlocks from the barrel extension. Enough gas returns through the gas tube to force the bolt carrier to the rear, unlock the bolt, and extract the cartridge case. The extractor is on the side of the bolt. The extractor claw was forced into the cartridge groove during loading. The spring-loaded ejector pushes against the base of the cartridge case and forces it out the ejection port. The hammer is rotated to the rear by the bolt carrier until a disconnector engages the upper hammer bent. In the butt of the rifle is the buffer assembly. The discs and loose weights prevent bounce back of the bolt carrier when it strikes the barrel extension on counter recoil. They also assist in regulating the cyclic rate of fire. The hammer is held to the rear by the disconnector until the trigger is released. The base of the cartridge is struck by the lower bolt lug and centers on the bolt face. The extractor clips into the groove of the chambered cartridge. The firing pin cannot contact the cartridge until the bolt locks into the barrel extension. The weapon is ready to fire only when the trigger is fully released. The hammer is now released from the disconnector and is held by the sear, firing on repetition or single shot. The cutaway section of the fire control selector allows the sear to release the hammer 
when the trigger is squeezed. The disconnector rotates forward to engage the hammer and prevent refiring before the operator can release the trigger. Firing on automatic. When the fire control selector is on auto, the disconnector is prevented from moving forward and engaging the hammer by a cam on the fire control selector. The rearward motion of the bolt carrier rotates the hammer to the rear. On the return or forward motion, the hammer is held by the automatic sear until the automatic sear is knocked forward by the bolt carrier and the hammer is released. When the trigger is released, the hammer is released by the automatic sear and caught by the trigger sear and automatic firing ceases. The Canadian Forces Small Arms Weapon, the C-7 Rifle and C-9 Light Machine Gun. Firing 5.56 NATO ammunition. The C-77 fall cartridge. Length, 56.4 millimeters. Weight, 11.8 grams. The cartridge is made up of a primer containing a priming mixture. And a tapered cartridge case containing the propellant charge. The lip of the case is crimped into the cannelure to grip the bullet. Bullet surfaces are smooth and angled rounded to improve flight stability and reduce drag at supersonic speeds. The bullet consists of a copper jacket, a steel core, and a lead core. The tracer bullet is four and a half millimeters longer than the ball bullet, 
to accommodate the tracer composition. The bullet is slightly bigger than the bore, providing forward obturation. When the hammer strikes the firing pin, the priming mixture is crushed against the anvil and explodes. The propellant reaches its point of ignition at approximately 170 degrees centigrade and converts into rapidly expanding gas. Chamber pressure expands the case body and the case shoulder against the chamber, providing rearward obturation. Forward resistance is initially high while the bullet is being engraved by the rifle. The bullet reaches a velocity of 920 meters per second and is spinning at 5,200 revolutions per second by the time it exits from the muzzle. This graph shows the relationship between temperature gas pressure, and bullet velocity from the point of firing to the point of bullet exit from the muzzle. At the point of firing, the temperature begins to rise. As the temperature climbs, gas pressure rises sharply, leveling off slightly as the cartridge case expands. Six ten thousandths of a second after firing, the temperature climbs to 2,600 degrees centigrade. As the bullet begins to move, the gas pressure declines from its peak of 350 megapascals. The gas pressure continues to decline as the bullet increases to maximum velocity. The priming mixture ignites the propellant and the combustion produces heat and gas. The pressure levels off briefly while the cartridge case expands providing rearward obturation. As the pressure builds to its peak, the bullet is dislodged. After the initial resistance to the rifling, the bullet rapidly increases in velocity and the gas pressure declines. The system is designed to deliver enough gas pressure back to the breech to operate the action. Bullet velocity and energy decrease with range, while a culminating point, the highest point in the bullet's trajectory, increases with range. At the muzzle, bullet velocity is 920 meters per second, and the energy is 1,800 joules. At 100 meters, velocity and energy show a marginal decline. The culminating point is a small fraction of a meter over the line of sight. At 300 meters, velocity declines by a third, and energy is half its initial value. The culminating point is almost a fifth of a meter over the line of sight. At 600 meters, the velocity of the bullet declines to less than half, and energy to less than a quarter. The culminating point is a little more than a meter above the line of sight.